After a night of dealing with what can only be described as a very weird night of fighting off walking farts, I thought we'd get some sort of reprieve. You know, some time to fix the house and restock before the next distortion. If this was a game, you'd have all the time you need to deal with supply shortages and healing and whatever it is. The difference is, this is no game. And reality? Well, reality had other plans. It was late the next morning as I was running the chainsaw. Those glowing freaks actually sure did a number of the surrounding area, knocking over a whole bunch of shit now had to be cleaned up. Moving from one piece to the next one, I was about to put the chain in position as my internal warning system went off and told me there was something. Snapping up, I looked and I didn't see anything for a few moments. Then, coming from my right, a distortion wave was coming very quick. It actually bent the perception of reality as it approached, almost like looking through distorted glasses. This much distortion was going to be big and a big problem. Moving my hand quickly, I turned off the chainsaw and as it wound down, I wasn't able to even put it down before the wave hit me. Immediately, I lost my balance and ended up flat on my ass. As I attempt to not puke, I realized that the saw actually landed on my foot and I was currently thanking God that I had turned the damn thing off. Wearing chaps and all, even wearing boots, still don't need my foot tore up by something like this. Fighting the urge to puke is infinitely more difficult when you're trying not to laugh at the irony of what just happened. Once I finally got to my feet, I hobbled like I was drunk all the way towards the house. I tried to look at my phone for the messages to get everything out, but immediately, as my brain tried to do both at the same time, I fell down straight on my face. As I was trying to get up, I used the talk to text, and I sent out the alert to everyone and told them they gotta check in. I got to the house, touched the door handle, and fell through the door as I began to call for the girls as my phone actually started to chime back in responses. I know that with each time, someone is checking in, so someone is saying they're okay. This chime is always something that is usually just annoying as all hell, but now it's the most beautiful sound I ever, ever heard. Second only to the girls answering my call for their location. They both came up to me, but they were still feeling the distortion themselves, and they fell next to me as they were trying to keep their wits about them as they were unable to focus on anything. Neither was I, at least for a few more moments. We stayed on the floor as I looked over at the phone, clutched tightly in my hand. Sure enough, others were checking in, but the autocorrect actually made them sound drunk. I sure they were you using talk to text as well, but eh, something was off. Slowly, I was getting back up on my feet, and when I was up, the girls weren't able to stand back up again. So I picked them up and went to the computer to get online. It didn't take long at all to realize something had hit and something else was happening. Videos of ships coming out of a dark artificial cloud all over the world spotting up every single continent, some of them showing up outside in the middle of the ocean. They all looked biomechanical as massive tentacles came out around the sides. The ships seemed to be heading towards cities as the populations were slowly getting back to their feet, usually out of a pile of their own vomit, and if they're not so lucky, out of a pile of their own shit. I didn't have time to worry about this as I began to hear shots in several directions from outside. We may be in a rural area, but still, if a distortion happens someone's shooting, you better pay attention. The girls followed me to the basement as it was still reinforced from the night prior. Getting my gear on, I was just finishing up when I could hear screaming and yelling from the outside. Checking outside of the front door, I saw a species that was new to me. And there was a male with some sort of gray or light blue skin. It was strange, and yet it had like silvery hair. It was strange. All I knew 
as they were beating on my door, speaking English and crying for help. I cracked it open. I was about to tell him to go to hell and get away, but next to him was a young girl that looked like green and yellow with pointy ears and seemingly her nose either was gone or was pushed up into her face. She looked at me with those reptilian type eyes that absolutely didn't show malice, but instead they showed something else. Fear. They began begging for my help, and I asked them who the hell they were. Turns out, they're from three houses down. That's only about a quarter mile away. I knew that they were kids there, but this was a new look that made them unrecognizable to me. I brought them in as I could see that one of those tentacle ships making its way through the area way off in the distance. I could hear shooting, but I wasn't sure what the fuck I was looking at. Then, seemingly, it began to turn towards us. As my girls were calming the young girl down, I turned to the boy and asked him if he knew how to handle a firearm as I handed him a rifle. When he reached out and said, Well, I play Call of Duty, I immediately yanked the rifle right out of his hands and told him, Just hide. Watching the tendrils go from house to house through binoculars, I saw a man make a run for it, only to be stabbed by this tendril and disappear in the same mystical smoke. I thought to myself, okay, I've seen this before. I wasn't sure where they were going, but it was clear the folks were alive somewhere. Were they inside the ship? Were they being teleported somewhere else? I didn't know. Didn't really care. The hovering ship had now turned towards the house and was getting closer. Seeing that the ship is organic, I switched to ammo that burns particularly hard. Unfortunately, I didn't have much of it left. Really one shotgun round and a couple of pistol rounds, but that was it. Not really much to make a difference, but I need to make it hurt. I know there's no way that only I could hold off something that big with so many tendrils. But if it's going to take me anyway, I'm going to make this bitch hurt a lot. Raising my weapon, I got ready to wait until it finally got within range as I could hear an old familiar sound. The hovering ship suddenly jerked hard as missiles slammed into its side. A pair of F-15s from the Air National Guard base had actually shown up and they brought friends. As the F-15 seemed to bank away hard after giving it a burst, another sound permeated the air. A sound that used to make me wonder who just got liquefied. With another missile strike, the rotary autocannon of the A-10 gave its introduction. The floating ship was buckling hard as the tendrils tried to protect it moving in the way. They could protect the hull from the missiles, either swatting them aside or sacrificing the tendril. But the depleted uranium bullets cut right through the tendrils and right into the ship. They must have actually hit something important as the ship began to list hard and then it fell towards the surface. I yelled down towards the basement to the girls that I'd be back and simply took off. Even using the ATV, it would still take several minutes to get there. And it did, about a half an hour, to reach that damn ship. As I got close enough to see the hull itself, I could see that others had actually shown up and were already pulling out the survivors. Inside was a absolute plethora of new species. All of them humanoid, but some barely even looked human. I recognized things like elves, tieflings, and yet I was not ready for the reptilians that looked like the little girl or... In some cases, they still had a reptilian body, but it was human-shaped, well, except for the head, which was fully reptilian. As I freed one of these reptilian females, it was actually easy to see that they were something else and had transformed due to the latest distortion. I could tell because most of her clothes had just become shreds of fabric. It was almost like when the Hulk transforms in the comics and everything just goes to pieces. When her unconscious form fell onto me as I opened up the pod she was in, her body felt soft. I guess it doesn't matter what form as I reached out. 
Boobs are still boobs. I did ask for a blanket to cover her up once we got outside, and when she awoke finally, she did clutch it as though she had to cover herself. She didn't even know what she looked like at that point, I don't think. There were also very human orcs mixed into this, but oddly enough, no goblins. Plenty of different types of elves, but these were much more human-like. But there was something off about some of the humans. Some of them had slight elvish features. Others were incredibly thin and a tad short. There were even a few that seemed to be only as big as my girls, yet their, shall we say, proportions seemed to be accentuated in certain ways. But they were still human-colored and still looked that way. What, what was this, a homunculus? What am I looking at? All in all, we didn't really have much time to worry about at that point as the helicopters finally arrived. We waved them in and I still remember my training as I had them almost terminate at a hover before I moved them a little closer. He was about to clip the tops of the trees with his rotor blades. Then I got him in position. Down he went and the soldiers immediately came out. And it was a good thing too because we needed them. The medics immediately got to work with the wounded and then something hit me on the back just as the soldiers actually got to me. We all fell down and I turned really quick to see some sort of octopus head looking motherfucker using some sort of magic. The military mages used something to fight back but this squid was strong and was able to deflect it. I felt another wave come across, seems like some sort of black blast from all that energy. Strong enough with his friends that stood next to him on his right and left to fight the magic, sure, but not strong enough for any of them to stop the wall of brass and lead that turned those octopussies into salsa. One of the men that had aided with the prisoners began screaming and asking for a thermite grenade. I went inside to find out what the hell was going on and something I hadn't even noticed or even paid attention to. In the center of where the prisoners were being held in those pods was a strange podium type device with some sort of parasites squirming around in it. We didn't know what was going on, but this was a definite biohazard. At first, they all looked for thermite, but that wasn't something that was issued, although I did curse out their NCOIC and OIC. What the hell were they thinking? They always need something that burns, and not just burns when you pee, I told them. The next area of discussion was people thinking maybe they could just blow it up, but that might just release these things. They, we can't afford that. Right now they're contained, but we don't know how long this containment's going to be going, and we need something. Then it hit me like a brick in the nuts. As I said, these things look like larvae. Insect larva. The OIC turned to me and said, So what? So, there are few better pesticides than nicotine. I stared him right in the eyes and he understood immediately, but before he even turned, the platoon sergeant was already on it. He had the idea for sure and called for anyone that had dip, cigarettes, or anything like that. Once inside, they all spit their chaw into the container along with dumping their cans of dip, something that they didn't want to do at the time, but as soon as they saw those things squirming around, they really didn't fight. The creatures inside didn't seem to notice for about a second, and then they started screeching so loud it was like a million nails ripping across a chalkboard. It was so loud we had to cover our ears as it hurt like hell. Thankfully, though, the screeching didn't last long, as that was the final death rose. We looked inside, and the larvae were all very, very dead. When the prisoners came out of whatever type of sedation they were under, I found out why the brother and sister had actually arrived at my door. Their father had turned into a large, green-skinned creature, I don't know, perhaps it was the height that he was now, maybe it was the tusks, but it scared the shit out of those two. Not as much as their mother did, now that she was a full reptilian. Don't get me wrong, 
her body is now banging, which is a very far cry from the obese woman she was beforehand. Then again, I realized some of her fat reserves must have either gone into her hips, her butt, her chest, or was just straight up burned up in the transformation, but whatever, I didn't have time to think about it. After I confirmed they are who they claim to be, thankfully, because their father, well, he still had his wallet on him. Thankfully, that hadn't totally torn off, even though he was in serious pain because his belt didn't give away when the rest of him had actually started to grow. They followed me back to the house afterwards. The whole time walking back, as they couldn't get all three of them on the ATV, I was not looking forward to their new introductions, which were awkward, to say the least. Though family, not a single one of them was the same species. This was just going to be weird. It sure was as we got back and they at first didn't recognize each other. In fact, in some cases, the voices had been altered just a little bit, just enough to make them question. Eventually, they all realized that the exterior of the body had changed, but the personalities, the mannerisms, the memories, all remained. After a long afternoon of everyone getting to know each other again, I made not one, but two venison roasts for the two families to enjoy, mine and theirs. As we ate, it became clear that their mother could no longer eat a lot of vegetables. It wouldn't kill her, but it wouldn't sit right. Even the taste seemed to be a little off for her. I guess this had to do with her transformation. I know, it made sense because now she has a very new reptilian type body. Her husband just had a deep pit for her stomach and could eat anything as he was just not full. Not only did he basically have almost a whole roast to himself, but he also had a whole bunch of vegetables, a whole bunch of bread, and he even finished off every single bag of snack food I had in the house before he said, okay, I'm good. After they finally left, bidding them adieu and grateful that the kids actually had smiles on them, glad that their parents were alive after all the craziness, it became clear that this distortion had to be worldwide if it came all the way to hell out here. So many were altered inside that ship that I knew things would change again, at least socially speaking. Some for the bad, others for the good, and some that are just straight up uh, interesting. I watched the content online, trying to figure out what the hell was going on around the world as the girls climbed into bed to fall asleep, totally exhausted. Though I did enjoy the sight of their butts and the reflection of the screen, I was very interested in what would happen next and what happened around the world in general. I knew that we as humans, or whatever you want to call us now, had ripped them a new asshole, but we didn't know what the actual toll would be. Tomorrow, I'll have to double check with the family to see if anybody else adjusted, changed, or was taken, or whatever. It's a little late, and most everybody's not answering. They're probably asleep at this hour. It's about that time as I make sure everyone and everything is locked up tight and secured. I don't want to lose anyone else to any type of bullshit. I mean, that's two distortions in 24 hours. I don't know what the hell's going on with that. All I do know is I have something in here I need to protect. Not only do I have to protect the supplies to help out the family in case they need it, but I have my girls here. I will protect them. And for that reason, I have to overwatch this property and keep it safe. Because you never know what's going to happen next. <laughs>